Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper right in corner, we have Pandora starting as the Midnight Blue Terran. Bottom left in corner, we have Semi starting as the Green Protoss. And I'm told that Pandora and Semi are very close uh, in skill level. And they've kind of, uh, the Pandora, that, that you have the triumvirate of Semi, pa uh, Semi, Pandora, and Erdmon that have been kind of playing against each other and rising in the ranks uh, across midfield. Semi certainly showing it. Because I do want to say he had a great match uh, he performed very, very well at the Chicago Land, and I uh, I recommend checking that out. I believe on Plat Esports they should be there. I'm not sure if there's a YouTube channel attached to Plat Esports where there's a, where those are going to be uh, filtered. But there were a lot of really good games. I think Semi was part of a, a good amount of them. I'm hoping he's a little bit more content with his performance there. But a pretty decent lineup. Um, it was originally looking to be an absolutely stellar lineup, but a lot of players had to drop out. It seems like last minute, which kind of uh, I'm a little bit sad about that because it was like, man, it looked like it was a stacked grouping initially. And I was excited to see Julia go up against potentially Crossy and potentially Gypsy. Um, but uh, those guys, uh, and maybe Hawk. I'm not sure if Hawk has completely shifted to to Stormgate, which, I don't know. Stormgate seems to be getting mixed reviews right this second. It's not fully out yet. So they got time to rebuild, recover. I do think they it's a uphill battle for them for sure. Barracks going ahead and getting dropped a long edge, so no front door seal or attempted front door seal here to start. Semi going ahead and going for probe scout after gateway. So don't think he's going to have an opportunity to go for a gas deal. Going to go ahead and tack on that gas. And pretty typical timing, scouting upper left hand corner first. Big macro map. I'll be interested to see if, so Pandora dropping a refinery early. I'm going to presume that this is going to be standard three marine into pressure. At cross position, I think it's going to be very, very important for Semi to get a lot of Dragoons out sooner rather than later, uh, just to make sure he, because I, I, at cross position, getting your Dragoons out there to try to intercept early Vultures can be very, very challenging. And having Vultures out on the map early can do, it just completely disrupts the Protoss build order. If you can get them scattered out in the field and dropping mines at the three o'clock and where you have to like wait for observers or throw a Zealot, at a location to go ahead and clear mines out, things like that. It's just, there's just a lot they can do to disrupt things. And at cross position, getting the Dragoons out there to even be able to absorb or spot them can be great difficulty. First Marine is spotted there by Semi. You also notice that it's an interior base. It looks like he did produce an initial Zealot on lack of scouting information, but I presume he's gonna just keep it at a single Zealot. Yeah, Dragoon gonna go ahead and follow, and, I, and he's gonna go, uh, I, I guess he's going to go range. I would be shocked if he queued up additional whatnot before range. Waiting for it. I don't know why I felt like this is the important thing is this part of the commentary, but we're waiting. He's got the resources. Never mind. He's going to go one Dragoon to, into expansion. So I was expecting one Dragoon, uh, I guess at cross position, that makes a lot of sense, actually. So ignore me. I was expecting one Dragoon and a little bit more defensive play. The other option is, is go into two base builds. Um... SCV still hasn't gotten to the base, by the way, to get the scouting information off Dragoon going to the front. I believe this SCV is going to be able to confirm that fast expansion. Uh, the one advantage at this cross position as well, Pander going to go ahead and test the front, but even this Zealot probe is enough of a threat where it's going to go ahead and back up. I feel like Semi's kind of donating the Zealot, though, recognizing that it was... He's got to recognize this is going to be Vulture first, so these units... He's got to get some damage down to get value, because there's no way the Zealot gets out. And it looks like he's just going to go ahead and try to tack on what damage he can to the Marines early interestingly enough, to make opportunities for the Dragoon to follow. So Dragoon able to get some addition, because it's the Marines that do the initial DPS. And he did a good amount of uh, job spreading out that damage, but a third Marine was produced by Pandor, and now that it's three Marines and a Vulture and a damaged Dragoon, he's going to go ahead and back up. Did that Dragoon get the SCV? No, it did not get the SCV kill. Was there a second Dragoon that I missed that's out in the field? Where did that SCV go? Did it draw all the way back to the main? Anyway, a little bit unexpected. Starport hidden bottom right, by the way, in the space of this. So I think there's going to be a drop follow-up here from Pandor. Semi's still trying to pick off what Marines he can before the bunker's up to try to, first of all, force more Marines out of the barracks, and second of all, keep that front as soft as possible for that aforementioned, making sure he's got some degree of map control and is able to shut down early Vulture's problem. So now that bunker getting constructed, and also try to encourage siege tanks instead of Vultures out in the field. So we got a starport down, we got mines upgrading, vultures being constructed, a control tower being dropped instead. So now this could prove problems for Semi, uh, 
Semi might straight, and this is great at cross position as well because Semi's gonna stage. And I love this play from Pandor too. So he's walking these vultures out on the field to draw Semi away from the front. And well, actually, never mind. I actually, hmm. I prefer that those vultures sneak out and then draw back. So there are mines out here, but that would have... And okay, is he going to do that? That would be amazing next level brain moves there. Because if he can keep Semi sending Dragoons to the natural expansion and trying to position there... Oh, Semi going forward. Nice snipe. Great play right there on that mine with that positioning. So a little bit of breathing room now for Pandora, but I would love to see him draw back and keep the Dragoons sitting at the natural expansion with the bunker to keep the defenses a little bit lighter because now what's going to happen is Semi's going to draw these Dragoons back which is not going to nullify but it's certainly going to potentially stymie this dropship there's going to be more Dragoons now potentially in a more defensive situation going to go ahead and move up uh, it looks like they're going to stage towards it and this is the problem right here we wants to try to stage forward to deny uh, the vultures from going ahead and getting mines planted. It looks like there uh, is mines at the six o'clock and in good number. Try to slow that base down. A couple dragoons defending here at the six o'clock, but here comes that dropship in the space of this. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that nine o'clock base. But uh, so it actually might end up playing out as well. Uh, but this is a closer reinforcement point for Semi, I got to say. So he's got two dragoons here, two dragoons here, six total. And the drop now making its way to the natural expansion. What's the reaction time? Okay, very fast pull on the probes. The Dragoons back in large numbers. And now that was, so what, for one worker? So now that was, that really did not pay out at all for Pandora. Oh, never mind. Secondary drop in the main. Gonna send it turning around. So able to get a few, uh, a couple probe kills, but I, and it looks like he's, uh, does manage to have a worker lead in the space of this. So ignore me. I thought that was, so the continuation drop actually makes it work. So nice and able to get a bunch of economic disruption both directions. So with that, Semi is going to have to do some economic catch up. The Observer out on forward field, by the way. Another Wraith to follow this up as well. Uh, the Wraith might be able to create some chaos at that 9 o'clock and pin some Dragoons back. But anyway, I digress on everything I said earlier. Pandora knows what he's doing. Ignore me. Immediately going up to, I presume this is going to be four factories, dropping the Academy as well to try to calm that out there and see what Semi's up to. Uh, four factories or five factories have, has kind of been the soup du jour lately. Armory tacking down as well. And it's kind of put Terran in a weird position where they can't exactly go up Ray Terran. Wraith, yeah, creating some disruption. Gonna, I don't think that Wraith has cloak, though. Drawing the probes back. In the meantime, some mines getting cleared. We'll see if that Wraith has cloak in just a moment. Never mind, it's just going to exit out. So a little bit of economic disruption. I don't think any kills, though. Yeah, zero kills overall. Maybe making it back to home base just to be sure. Uh, siege check still not finished. And the bunker down now at the natural expansion. And Semi has five Dragoons, which is a solid count to start sniping siege tanks. And he's going to be able to take out that turret on the front as well. So now, okay, tanks on the high ground. But they're going to have to walk their way down and get closer. So Semi able to get some economic damage done the opposite direction. Good play. Bye-bye SCVs. And that's an empty natural. Group repair going to be necessary around that siege tank. Ooh. Does die to follow up volley. But still, I think that's worth it for Semi. Just, first of all, getting all the economic disruption at the natural expansion and picking off the two siege tanks. That's big. That can shut down a lot of timing attacks on top of everything else and make you feel a little bit more comfortable macroing up. So now he's closed the worker gap where he did want to be a little bit ahead, particularly on three base. Um... I think he's going to transition to three base arbiter in the space of this, but doing a pretty good job. The observer is also able to check out four factories and critically actually a single machine shop. Looks like a fifth factory is being added on and I'm waiting for additional machine shop to get added. So another drop ship and semi repositioning that observer to see that drop ship as it's produced. Lyth range being produced. I think semi will be feel perfectly okay with this. If he goes for the gateway flood, he could gateway man this. If he goes for the Gateway Flood, gets a lot of Dragoons out, I don't think there's just going to be flat a sufficient amount of Siege Tanks to deal with the Zealot Leg Speed and Dragoons that Semi's going to be able to produce as far as a follow-up with this. Um, and that is of grave concern. So we got a dropship trying to make its way out to the bottom right. I think the Observer tagged along for quite a bit of ter uh, period of time. We have two Dragoons to help defend against the Vultures. They're just going to go ahead and scout across the map if they make the way to the 6 o'clock. Dragoons getting 
a dragoon getting wiped out maybe two dragoons right there getting wiped out at the six o'clock location It'd be great if we had like a little extra panel vultures diving in but the cannon and the dragoons able to make pretty short work of that semi went for a little bit of a probe drill i'm not sure that was necessary but it's going to be five factories a lot of vultures as long as there's sufficient observers and yeah the game i think is going to come radically shift once out leg speed is complete and semi, I, I just don't think there's going to be enough seed shanks in the mid game here for Pandor. Supply count's even though, I, I want to note that. But it's a deceptive even, is the trick. Like usually when Terran's even, that puts them way ahead, but that's because a bulk of that supply is in siege tanks. Not because uh, it, of other factors. But anyway, it's going to be a minute though. Zealot leg speed now getting upgraded. So Pandor might have, because of the early economic disruption, might still be A-OK. -okay. But this is four siege tanks, five siege tanks, to try to go ahead and uh, defend that third. And the Vultures, as a result, are going to have to really be heavily leaned on by Pandor to move across that map and create a lot of additional havoc. It looks like they did manage to redrop mines here at the six o'clock. Dragoons are splitting towards the forward front. We don't have it. But yeah. I'm not sure that this is going to hold. So this is four, five. We got five siege tanks total to try to defend this right now. And so the vulture is going to have to create enough chaos to buy some time to fill in that siege tank count. We do now have double machine shot, but it's going to be a long time. Siege tanks take a lot of time to build. Semi sitting on three bases is now starting to peel forward that supply lead. The observer sees that three o'clock, but here's the thing. Now it's three siege tanks here and just two siege tanks at this location. And Zelt leg speed's not that far from finishing. And pretty quick, you're going to have... And you also have a... Looks like a shuttle to get them across that minefield. So one drop here, one drop here. That's an easily bustable third. So I think there's problems for Pandor as far as the follow-up here. Yeah, Semi starting to chase forward. We have a lot of vultures hugging now. A lot of vultures starting to hug this 3 o'clock to try to make up the difference. Plus one weapons, by the way, finished on that end. No uh, weapons upgrades on the opposite side and it looks like yeah it's just going to be gateway man to follow the sea shanks make their way across the zealots right on top of this though but the dragoons not able to break their way across and it looks like the vultures are going to be able to cover the sea shanks at that location so never mind and or able to hold there and might be able to push the rest of this back so third base procured now for pandor which if he can get that up and running will put him at an advantage because semi hasn't grabbed his fourth yet Hasn't cleared the six o'clock location, so bullet dodge potentially. Semi at a, again an economic lead. Looks like he has transitioned into Gateway Man. And my commentating uh, misses has failed me here. I, I was completely wrong. Pandor holds. The overwhelming amount of vultures were sufficient because of the terrain on top of everything else. No third machine shot but, uh, as of yet. And now the siege tank count. How many siege tanks are we looking at? Well, okay. This is still a little bit low for where he wants to be at, but it's starting to get healthier. The vultures continuing to filter out on the map. Third gas getting grabbed here from Semi at the nine o'clock. He's got a nice 30 supply lead. More zealots starting to group up in this attack force. This also might've been a factor of cross position as well. I'm wondering if it was at uh, horizontal or horizontal or vertical spawns, if we would have been talking about a different story as a lot of this engagement. Templar archives dropped, so probably gonna see a transition to Arbiter right this second. But plus two weapons, plus one armor on the way which would create a delayed 2-1 push, but semi a little bit late on that fourth base. He will be maxed in supply, so he's got to get some good engagement is what it comes down to as far as the, the follow-up. Now, Pandora's got these three bases, but it can kind of turn it into an inverted problem now where because semi has uh, another issue is semi doesn't need to be too aggressive here because th this is a large open field here mid-map. You can see how wide and open this is, although as I say that he walks walking forward to clear some of those mines. If he, if he just lets Pandora hit 200-200 and gets some good swarming attacks midfield and goes for Gorilla Protoss, he'd still be okay. Making his way in with this, donating a shuttle, but now that that shuttle's gone, gonna go ahead and back up. Yeah, I think he just, he'll be okay just allowing those three bases to stand, filling in that tech, grab some of these additional bases around the field, and then just swarm him once he tries to walk out mid-map. Uh, this now becomes a problem for Pandora. Pandora now down 20 supply, but he is gonna hit that that upgrade spike to start pushing at semi uh, in a little bit more zealots starting to rejoin the field the vultures still doing a good job Pedro doing a good job with the vultures and keeping them active around and out and about in the map and keeping a lot of this army uh unstable and also kind of getting a good look at semi the size of semi's attack force it looks like he wanted to explore and see if any additional bases had been grabbed by semi as of yet and 
what ironically what this might trigger is it might trigger semi to grab an additional base uh at these locations that's also because semi moving completely bottom right pandor able to maneuver some vultures out towards the nine o'clock two siege tanks in drop ships here at the nine o'clock and this might be a dead base semi all the way bottom right was echoing the the vulture movement and now that's going to open up some serious economic damage here at the nine o'clock and a lot of mines in between really going to tax semi's trigger to, or, uh, observer discipline we will try to widen the field to see both these maneuvers so yeah losing some troops fortunately they they were coming in at a line right there a dragoon able to provide a little bit of distraction that nexus getting pounded away at by the vultures but it looks like the siege tanks were cleared up lost a lot of probes in the space of this but the cavalry has arrived to go ahead and clean up the rest of this attack force and i don't think that is that dropship going to make it out that would be a travesty dropship is going to make it out so heroic dropship did its damage able to push its way back out so semi kind of at two and a half bases as a result on the exit of this more vultures starting to scream across pandor is now evened up the supply count with that last maneuver and the other critical bit is, is this is keeping semi from grabbing the rest of the map and that's really what he needs to be doing at this stage to to contend with the even army even upgrades so that he can kind of do that refugee style of, of donating resetting and donating armies and staying uh, ahead economically so semi getting engaged mid map a bunch of siege tanks already there but a beautiful blanket of side storm in a space of this greeting all those siege tanks and the entire front lines getting peeled back and this is before the zealots are even hitting that front line and doing the mind drags although that mind drag critically clearing that up but semi with the beautiful size storms wiping out that attack force defense matrix might save this on the front depending on where the target fire goes from semi that's enough siege tanks to clear out the dragoons that are left but this was a massive army reset and a massive remacro a nice remacro there by semi so not going to be able to to breach here but doing precisely what he needed to do which is cripple the return forces more zealots going to march forward okay now going to back out i was about to say a little bit overextending but we do have vultures critically for pandora blocking off bottom right so semi did what he needed to do to reset things a bit and buy himself some breathing room but at the same time because he hasn't grabbed the rest of the map because we have vultures camping out the rest of this field and because he hasn't had the time to really clear out the rest of these expansions and put them under his control uh i'm not sure that this is going to turn into we'll see if this turns into an advantage so kind of a short-term reprieve i don't know if that's going to be a long-term advantage mains mind out natural expansion looking a little bit light for pandor in the meantime three o'clock base is there somewhat under defended he's going to go ahead and float out to the 12 o'clock base in the space of this some zealots finally clearing out bottom right looks like it cost a lot of their lives though the zealot needs to stay nearby though okay, he's going to drop some cannons maybe to clear that mine would be more uh, expedient if the zealot actually moved in never mind out of position so the nexus in fact going to drop so might be able to get two additional bases in the space of this and again because of that earlier army reset there's not a lot that pandora can do with reasonable risk to try to press into this maintain 20 supply lead here from semi still doesn't grab though the natural expansion might want to grab just uh, all of this and get it up and running and also get some gateways down there while he can no movement whatsoever to arbiter tech which kind of makes sense given the current situation uh pandor has done a good job of marching out on the field he's like okay while well, semi's distracted procuring bottom right let me just go ahead and fold forward and get some mines down get some turrets down create some clutter mid-map which i think is a very very strong play considering how difficult it is for terran to just get out on the map and that also gives him a nice foothold oh and a nice rate snipe on the observer here to the north and that gives him one defenses to go ahead and hold that 12 o'clock and two a reinforcement point in the middle of the map where he doesn't have to worry about getting swarmed on all sides by semi uh so good play right there gateways now starting to filter in bottom right more vultures and it looks like some goliath's going to come alongside i think this is just going to be to test and seek out what's out there on the map i don't know just that the single base is going to be sufficient for semi to keep it up in the long term but in the meantime it is two bases versus three uh, which is fightable from both positions and semi now all of a sudden moving up the tanks weren't siege mid position but we have another grouping of siege tanks out to the right the zealots going all over the place so now the question is is where does the army redirect for semi if he redraws it to the left and moves and shoots up the 12 o'clock 
this could be great but he's got to have the presence of mind to do it and he does repositions he's going to shoot up to the 12 o'clock he has some high templar to blanket some side storm as far as far as the refollow and a great play there from semi wonderful presence of mind and that's going to shut down that 12 o'clock base and now all of a sudden semi in a commanding lead so and all sorts of siege tanks trying to pile forward to reclaim that territory and emp it looks like it whipped on the attempt and some zealots able to clear out some of the forward siege tanks no high templar in the space of this but not only an army reset he's also got some high templar to provide some support not only an army reset but also a blanketing side storm fortunately i think pandora might have i'm not sure if that was fast reaction time or if he was already trying to move them out of the way but that 12 o'clock base might have to get distance mine for a minute the wraith gonna press forward trying to find that drop shuttle and that shuttle moving itself out of the way semi is now saturated bottom right has those four gateways in position but a massive supply deficit now for pandor he's got plus three weapons plus two armor but he doesn't have the bulk troops to follow this up and now semi if he wanted to can go ahead and start uh claiming territory at will and not have to worry about some defense although we do have a drop ship with some vultures making its way bottom right a single dragoon nearby to, pro uh, to provide some support Pandora getting a good use. He's, his map movement has actually been really phenomenal. It looks like while he's doing that distraction at that bottom right, filling in some siege tanks again towards that 12 o'clock location. Whiff of a side storm. Are they going to get a high? The high Templar would be absolute bonus right here. So critical hit of some. Looks like a zealot of all things able to clear that up. High Templar <laughs> unloaded here at the low ground. That wraith a little bit weak. So upon a single shot, yeah, side storming everything, morphing into an archon. Although the science vessel could turn around and drop an EMP on that Archon, that would be kind of cute. Tit for tat. They're at the 12 o'clock location. In the meantime, Semi starting to move back out. A lot of Archons in tow. Plus two weapons, plus one armor, by the way, for him. But these tanks still hit very, very hard. Starting to, to make sure... I think this is more maneuvers to dissuade Pandor for, from trying to claim territory top left. And while he's doing that, he's going to go expand to the, the low ground bottom right. Because if he can just keep Pandor to this 12 o'clock and the 3 o'clock over the long term and keep getting good trades like he has, he'll be in a great position. Terran doesn't usually feel confident moving out on the map, especially at this level of the game until they're hitting kind of that 200 mark uh, and moving out in, in good fashion. A couple of vultures starting to just, or usually, at, I don't know, above 160 supply. So don't quote me. It's not 200, but they want to have more siege tanks. You want to have more just so you can kind of contend with everything Protoss is throwing at you. Uh, Vulture's going to go ahead and check in to that th lower 3 o'clock base. They are going to be able to find an up to Nexus bottom right. And actually, you're going to catch some probes on transfer. I'm not sure if that was off a of commsat timing or not, but some nice psychic timing there from Pandor. I'm going to go ahead and back up those Vultures. Does he have any mines left? Okay, he has a couple mines, but not going to mine up that as of yet. Perhaps feeling like a little bit late. Wants to draw them back to the rest of his attack force. So, Pandor down uh, a good chunk of supply. Has full upgrades right this second. Is, has filled in uh, a lot of his army with those science puzzles. So, in a good position right there. Uh, good healthy factory count. Looks like he's going to lift off that command center. Try to float it out to the top left. We do have some Archons and Zealots at that position. And right now, the problem for Pandor is his semi can kind of refugee this. Like, he can go for counterattacks and lose some holdings. and He's got a massive bank to work with right here. Pandor cannot lose an engagement and cannot uh, lose an assault to take additional territory right here. If he assaults on, at any direction, he needs to win those battles and he needs to win them convincingly. Otherwise, Semi's just going to be able to outproduce him. And I think Semi knows it right this second, fanning out top left. The Archon's not towards the front, but that's okay. The Zealot's towards the front. Did that EMP? There was a bit of an EMP. It doesn't look like it managed to hit a lot. So Semi testing the corners and backing out after the initial engagement. I wonder if he's going to make his way to Arbiters at this stage. Looks like he's just dropping some additional gateways down. And going to play, yeah, Gateway Refugee style. So, and he still does have the, the shuttle in tow to maybe get some side storms. But moving up, this time the Archon's out in front after a fan out. The Vulture's completely gone, leaving just the siege tanks exposed. And there's the side storm over a pocket of those siege tanks. Fortunately for these siege tanks, there's not a lot of troops otherwise, but still a lot of losses happened there for Pandor. But Se and Semi can go ahead and rebuild. 
And in the space of this, I don't know that that was enough. Well, we'll see if this is enough. We got an Archon starting to work on that command center top left. We already have a probe top left as well, trying to get some cannons down. I don't think this is for Semi to try to seize this territory. I think it's more a denial tactic uh, over the long term. I also think I missed a Psy Storm drop someplace. I'm guessing here at the third, because we got that shuttle making its way back, although that could have been from the previous battle. Natural expansion now getting saturated top left. So that was a big win for Pandor, actually. So in between that army reset, starting to filter back out. He's still got these siege tanks out of position. And this is before Semi was able to scramble back on the map to contend with those siege tanks being unseached and out of position. And uh, in the meantime, Semi still hasn't grabbed the third base bottom right. So this is going to get mined out. He's going to be down to effectively three bases in the bottom right. That's going to be three bases versus two. Pandor's still alive in the space of all of it. So turning into kind of a late game epic match. And on top of that, Pandor's evened up the supply. Uh, after that last macro cycle, which means he can now start taking the fight to semi instead of just, especially now that he's established the low ground bottom left and cleared out into the top left. So, so now semi has to make something happen going the opposite direction because otherwise he's at risk of getting run over. And Pandor, with very, very good game sense, so re uh, repairing the siege tanks, it looks like he still wants to play this passively. In the mid map, some vultures able to eke through, although a round of dragoons look like they might be able to intercept. There are also some cannons down here. This is actually kind of the late game tactics. I'm never sure if this helps or hurts Protoss when they're above the 65 count because it's like, okay, yeah, you got some probes, but at the same time, like 55 workers across three bases is kind of where you want to be. And that frees up some supply as long as you have the bank to fill it in. Otherwise, I'm never sure though, uh, in the space of that. Something for a much better player than me to, to comment on. We do have a switch to fleet beacon and plus one air weapons in the space of this. I'm not sure if I like that right this stage, where I'm trying to find out where that tech's being built. Is that being built bottom right? That creates a target of opportunity wherever it's being built. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, we're going to zoom out and see. We're going to take it off here. There it is. In the main base, next to that cybernetics core. It's just going to be a single. Looks like it is only a single uh, stargate. You usually want the two additional stargates in the space of that. But in the meantime, and or mining is uh, mining happily. He's actually got the supply lead right here. Semi has mashed a bit of the upgrades, but Mech just still hits harder. Observer getting cleared out. And now, like, yeah, Pandora has done it, really. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be up to Semi to win this match now because he's uh, right now, if you look at territory control, if you just look at the mid map line, Pandora has cut the map in half and can kind of reinforce to the three clock or reinforce top left with the center line. And as long as he slow plays this, that means he's going to be even on bases, which means Terran, as long as they're getting even trades, <laughs> excuse me, are ahead. A couple carriers queued up. There's Okay, there's the other Stargate in that back left corner. So Semi opting to go ahead and switch to carrier in the space of this. I don't know if Pandora comps at it or not. He does have a good count of late game Goliaths that I think it's just what you expect late game. And this is kind of trouble because keep in mind a good portion of the supply of semis is in carriers that are not yet fielded. And that will be the case for the long haul. You kind of have to leave that pocket in the space of this. And so Pandor just going to go ahead and seal up these locations, keep that map cut in half, keep the comp set up. If he if he actually wanted to do kind of a wraith fill in, uh, could be a little bit cute, but it looks like he's going to go ahead and dive forward towards that bottom right. Semi able to jump on top of those siege tanks before they're siege yet again. High Templar drop. Man, that was a pile of siege tanks. That was the first major mistake I think I've seen Pandora make, getting caught out of position. So those siege tanks getting absolutely blanketed, and now it is a reversal of supply. And I think if he just... Oh, man. And so Semi, uh, potentially in this, can go ahead and build a lot of zealots and maybe clean out... Well, actually, never mind. There's a few too many siege tanks but might be able to turn around and do a reverse sweep. Pandor still moving forward. He's wedged his way towards the six o'clock base and is creating a lot of threat here, actually, despite being at that supply deficit. A lot of that supply deficit probably, again, a little bit uh, deceptive because, again, it, it's probably the, the queued up units here in that Stargate, a good portion of it. So now we got a massive amount of siege tanks banging with the six o'clock. This wasn't the prime target for Pandor, though, because even though there's gas, there, there's not a lot of minerals left, but every little bit helps that he's pulling it out of the, the Protoss pocket. And he's also creating a wedge between, oh, I'm not sure if it's helpful or not, between the natural expansion and the main. 
where there's a lot of mines and a couple siege tanks left that will slow down the reinforcements. And he's diving in. Looks like he managed to get the EMP off on that High Templar bottom right. And the carriers, yeah, not on the ground. If they're gonna, they gotta be the rescue mission. Okay, a bunch of carriers making their way to the right. I don't know if this is gonna be in time or not. Even though Pandor doesn't have a lot of Goliaths in the space of this, this is a lot of siege tanks that could chew through this pretty rapidly. And an EMP and reinforcements and a pullback. I don't know. I, well, so Semi's here. Now the question is, is what does Pandor do? Does he just unsiege and retreat? He needs to unseize and retreat if he donates all of these siege tanks. Oh man, massive amounts of Psy Storm dropped on the cliffside edge. Yeah, he can't donate all these siege tanks. So he, instead, he's going to go ahead and try to pile in, get what value he can. He's splitting some of these troops. He's at least denying that Nexus at the natural expansion. This was my concern is that Pandora still might be in an okay position if he just pile drives through all of this and the carriers just can't take everything down rapidly enough. But I think. Instead, what's happening here is he's not taking anything down rapidly enough. Semi still has that three o'clock base. He's got some vultures, yeah, that denied that natural expansion. Reinforcement's gonna clean things up here. And in the meantime, Pandora are gonna lose what mining he's got. At the three o'clock, if the carriers refit, actually might even be able to wipe with the carrier lines, or I should say the Goliath lines, but if he just gets on top of the factories. So now on top of the factories, picking off Goliath as they're produced. And this is gonna be GG potentially for Semi. Or for uh, for Pandor, I mean, because Semi has put him in a position where he's not going to uh, potentially not going to have enough anti-air, so the Goliaths have to sit here and defend. The siege tanks have moved into the three o'clock. They're clearing that out, so it's one base production. Bottom right, this is going to get really thin. It looks like the carrier is going to retreat. They're clearing off that command center as they're making the way back. Enough Goliaths to go ahead and shove this back and enough of an economic threat that semi having to retreat and deal with this so pandor at an economic lead he's got 12 o'clock he's got upper left and it's kind of one of those weird flip situations where semi has to be too many places with these carriers potentially which might give and this is wide open field by the way like look how open this map is for these goliaths to hunt down these carriers so the carriers to go from bottom right to top left is a great amount of difficulty and so and it could be a lot of trouble here for semi and he's he can recap that bottom left he can recap that base in the bottom right hand corner but it, it's going to be but it's going to be a big challenge pandora's put himself in a potential winning situation where's that siege tank attacking from here's siege tank attacking but i can't okay it's underneath <laughs> hidden underneath that uh, weird globville thing very very cute uh, so carriers moving back out in the field. This is very dangerous territory for them to wander out to, particularly without Dragoon or Zealot support. Looks like some Dark Templar are going to try to be the supporting units underneath this. This is plenty of Goliaths. A lot of Goliaths. And again, plus three weapons is already there, by the way. And uh, I don't know where the air weapons are. It looks like we do have plus two weapons, plus two shield, plus two shielding right there. The, Dragoon, the Dark Templar trying to create some chaos here mid-map. Distance mining, catching a, f a few probes. And yeah, I think the problem now... This is not the best engagement point for Pandora. He wants to engage in open field, not over a large gap where the carriers can take shots and retreat. But, and so uh, a couple Goliaths getting donated. Also, the High Templar are going to walk up. Psy Storm the Goliaths can't allow that to happen either. And now the rest of that attack force is going to move in and that's going to peel back the Goliaths that were there. So Pandora, despite having the supply lead, despite having the composition to maybe hurt this, is kind of handing Semi better engagements overall. So now, uh, well, okay, he still's got a nearly full control group of Goliaths, which will keep those carriers back. But Pandora still needs to be very diligent with this. And there's still a resupply opportunity. The probe still ho uh, hovered back there. It looks like the natural expansion is up. But it's two, uh, so it's two base versus three base. Not that, that bottom, well, it's kind of saturated. It's anyone's game. This is kind of razor thin, honestly. And it might come down to macro. Some Archons are making their way top left. They go right over mines. So the Siege Tanks might have to exit here the 6 o'clock location, which could alleviate the pressure and allow Semi accidentally uh, doing uh, a little bit more damage to that pylon. I think he intended. He attacked it to open up the interceptors. But that relieves the pressure on Semi. And now with those Goliaths mid-map, he is going to pick up the Siege, uh, attack the Siege Tanks that are retreating. And if these Archons group fire go two and two that could shut down pandora's economy the carriers still need to be very very careful mid-map it looks like while the goliaths are distracted he might go back to the factory line so gonna pick off that command center he's making the way around 
still trying to find a uh, dive open territory but the archons have taken out that base top left working on the SEV lines so they can group attack that command center knock it out of there and all of a sudden pandora no longer mining goliath nearby those probes gonna make their way out so we got so mind out bottom right we got one base left there pandor trying to rebuild top left archon's up on the high ground this base uh denied both players right this second the carrier's regrouping even supply i'm never sure what to call even supply late this game because carriers kind of behave differently than the rest but the goliaths with support and they're gonna get obliterated by that storm if they're not careful but yeah they got a full-on retreat where are the siege tanks the siege tanks look like they all moved top left so now the goliaths have zero support against the carriers high templar and dragoons that are making their way across the map and that is going to put them at risk of getting obliterated the vultures trying to make their way across they're eating some size storm and getting picked off that command center at the three o'clock again this is kind of the reverse situation of pandora earlier where do we have another size storm to work with uh, a little bit one uh, one carrier getting knocked out by the way in the space of that dragoon's able to filter back under the siege tanks tr uh, are the siege tanks going to make their way he needs some support to get the siege tanks out here and now the problem for pandor is by backing out and seeding this territory he's also seeding an attack line to the factories and if he loses the factories it doesn't matter what his economy's at all of a sudden semi with a massive supply lead the goliath's charging back in but this is plenty of dragoons and high templar support still six a very healthy carrier count looks like a probe waiting to go ahead and grab that base bottom right to recap so now Pan so pandor mining not the best spread on the workers he's got so he's got a two base advantage right now with a massive worker uh, a massive supply deficit he's got to be careful about this and semi with a potential win opportunity but he's got to hurry before pandor is able to refill that attack force and reconcentrate his, his attack forces it looks like the army has re-solidified for semi as he's regathered bottom right getting constructed let's see vultures make their way that direction because we do have that spotting with that mine at the nearby position it looks like we do have uh two vultures making the way that's been spotted by an observer do we have a cannon warping in no cannon as of yet but semi going to make his way towards the left he's clearing out some mines as he goes and or trying to mirror that army movement and i'm i feel like this is potentially the worst maneuver now for semi some dragoons going to clear out those vultures they were attacking at position a cannon warping in as well just checking that base upper left i think he thought that base was already in play the carrier is a little bit exposed here if pandora walks forward into them tank sieging semi drawing back the ground army and should be able to concentrate fire i don't think there i think there's just too many carriers and i don't think group repair is going to cut it so the carrier is able to wipe that command center out so now there's distance mining happening top left and a sweep back around still a 50 supply lead the ground army making its way up mid map to cut off any reinforcements and now all of a sudden pandora potentially blockaded top left the carriers getting chased back by the goliaths but going to find an exit point so one of them one of their numbers dropped I'm gonna clear out a little bit at the 12 o'clock i'm not sure how much of a help that is a wraith now out on the field they're not they haven't comps at and picked off the observers but it looks like they are going to be able to clean out some of the carriers that's a lot of supply potentially lost but now the cannons there to support which is going to make those rates somewhat less effective so four of the carriers are down but a lot of carriers left and semi's ground force moving in blanketing the siege tanks and cleaned that up and now they got there's what a goliath three goliaths and some vultures to try to defend upper left high templar dies but still this is a massive attack force now making its way into the upper left hand base and that might be it reinforcing siege tanks making the way across it might yeah too little too late pandora gives the gg what an incredible game between these two holy cow hope you guys enjoyed that one that one's for the record books right there thank you guys for listening